Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to sell peer to peer, some of the, the tricks and tips you're going to need when selling. Selling can be quite daunting, you know, if you've never done it before. It's, it's one of those things, it's a real eye opener and there's certain human behavioral traits that come up quite often. There's some good traits, there's some bad traits and you kind of need to understand this when dealing with people. So I've, I've made up a little list of things I deal with on a constant basis, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you how I kind of counteract these type of behaviors. It's not a science, it's more an art, everyone is different. So it, it's very ad hoc in how you deal with people and it very much is a judgment call. But I just wanted to run through them. So you're gonna have people who who lie to you to try and get your coins cheaper. It happens a lot. And I don't think there's any malice in it 90% of the time. Sometimes people buy stuff and they change their mind and you end up selling it. I had one gentleman a few years ago and he said, oh, I've been collecting with my granddad. I want to finish uh, a date run of Brits. Can you help me out? And I, I was like, yeah, sure. I gave him a better price. He seemed like a nice kid, nice guy. And then two weeks later, he flogs it and he, he makes a lot of money off it. And at the time, I was like, ah, you kind of, I walked into that one, you know. But this is the type of thing that will happen. Recently, my supplier, or one of my suppliers said to me, there's this gold coin coming in. I don't know what it is. And I said to him, I've got no idea. It was like 400 years old. We worked out it was a, a Unite. And I knew straight away I was going to get messages for this coin. And I knew straight away there was going to be people... Because I said I didn't know what it was, they're going to tell me it's worth this. One gentleman said, oh, it's worth 500. It's trash. It's it's a really bad coin. I collect these. I know what they're worth. And I was like, hmm, yeah, okay. I said, let me let me speak to a couple of people I know. And I'll get back to you. In the end, the coin didn't come in. So the story was, I, I genuinely didn't know what it was worth. I, I don't deal with these types of coins. I said to my supplier, I'll give you an outlet if you want to sell it. Uh, I then spoke to a few people I knew and they gave me an outlet if I bought it. So it was just a simple arb arbitrage play or middleman play. And yeah, it didn't come in. The, the gentleman who wanted to sell it to my supplier said he'd already knocked back an offer of 1500 Now to have someone say it's worth 500 you know, you know he's trying to get it on the sly. It is what it is. Um... It may be the case that because he's not mainland UK, that that's genuinely what it's worth where he is from. But I, I didn't believe him when he said it was worth that because he instantly went to let's talk down the coins. Let's talk them down and get it to a lower price that he needs to kind of make money on it or to add it to his collection for a discount. It is what it is. You are going to get that. The way you need to counteract that is you need to have strong hands to say well actually i'm going to find the right buyer for it you don't have to take the first offer you you really don't there's there's many occasions where people say i want it for this i want it for that and i say well let me shop it around you know there might be someone who pays more there's there usually is someone who will pay more sometimes there isn't and my response will be well let me see where i get with it if it doesn't sell i'll come back to you it's not a problem i'm in the business of moving coins and if I genuinely can't find a seller, uh, a buyer within a specific time frame, it's okay. You know, I know what I paid, I know what you're offering, and I'm I'll be happy with that margin. The second thing I wanted to talk about was people fobbing you off. Now, this is this is something that really gets my goat. It takes the biscuit. There's some people out there who don't value your time. Time for me is very valuable. It not in terms of a, a monetary sense, but in terms of I'm still at the age where I'm relatively young. I still want to go out and I still want to do my thing. You know, you you may have a family, X, Y, Z, it doesn't really matter. But you're going to have people say, yeah, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. And then you've still got it two weeks, three weeks, four weeks later. This one you need to learn by trial and error. You get to a point where you know someone's good for it. Or you know they're not. I have a couple of customers and they say, I want to buy X on X date or Y date, sorry. And I know their pay. I put it to one side. I've even got one gentleman where I send it pr before. I send it prior because I know he he is paid every month. Never a problem. But you will have people who they don't appreciate your time. 
I don't appreciate appreciate you as a an individual when you're trying to sell your coins and it, it can be frustrating you may be wanting to put that money into maybe a holiday or something else or maybe some home improvements and you'll be installed by that one person see most people will naturally try and hold up their end of the bargain and there's some people that let the team down and don't they they say one thing and do something else but most people genuinely are, are all right in that concern another issue i come up across a lot is really aggressive negotiation and kind of like uh the people who i said i'll come back to you i don't like dealing with these people i don't mind people negotiating but the reality is if i know you're an aggressive negotiator i'm putting the price up straight away because it's not about the price of the coin it's about winning it's about having that winning mentality and getting one over me or the person they're buying from so straight away the price of the coin goes up you know i i didn't want to run it like that but i was finding when i first started people would genuinely be like no i want more money off him and the, the monetary uh value that i attached to the coin or the bar it didn't matter in the first place they just they just want to walk away feeling like they got a good deal i don't like doing that it is what it is i i'd rather deal with a trader if a trader's aggressive uh, which i've had in the past they try and hound you down, hound you and hound you and hound you. And I say, look, I've been in this game a long time. Someone else will buy it. So you pay the price or you don't, but that's the end of the conversation. And if you're inexperienced in selling your own coins, some of you may fall prey to that. So there are some really aggressive negotiators. And it's kind it's kind of a problem. You know, there was I was talking to a gentleman and someone I know quite well, and he he put a coin up on eBay. Someone said to him, it's worth 125, it's worth bullion, spot, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm not going for 290. You, you do have options. If you can't sell it on your, your social medias, you've got eBay, you know. But don't ever cave in into aggressive behavior or passive aggressive behavior because you're going to lose out, and there's plenty of people that would buy from you concern, uh, regardless of uh if someone wants it for less or not you know you'll you have to sell the coin to one person you've got to think about the overall picture in terms of who could buy it you don't have to take the first offer now that kind of goes into people haggling down again what i said you with with me i, I started to raise my prices uh the, the deeper i got into this for, for multiple reasons I wanted to be the cheapest and I wanted to provide the best service. Now I was recently dealing with a, a gentleman who he said to me, he's in antiques. He was like, I want to be the cheapest and I want to provide the best service. And I said, let me give you some advice. You, if you pitch yourself at the cheapest, you're going to attract the type of customer who doesn't care about developing a relationship with you. They want the cheapest price. If you're working hard to build relationships through customer service, you're wasting your energy, your effort, and you're making your life more difficult. It's going to be the same for you. I don't know how much, how many coins you're going to have. If you've built up a stack over a long, longer period of time, and you've got a lot to move, it makes sense to build those relationships with people because they can always come back to you. You can always strike a deal with them moving forward. If you just want to offload it quickly, go to a dealer. You know, if you don't want to build that relationship and put the legwork in, go to a dealer. It's going to save you a lot of aggro because say you've built up a collection over 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, you're going to have so much odd stuff. A dealer might actually be the better solution even though you're going to get less because you're not going to have to deal with the aggro of selling it, haggling, etc. This is work, you know, this... It's not like the stock market where you can you can buy something and sell something at the click of a, a mouse. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. You've got to put the energy and effort in to kind of extract the most value, and you are going to come up against these behaviours. Now, one thing I will say is there's a lot of people who are actually very fair. So I, I've had some people and I give them a price and they're like, no, I, I can give you a bit more than that, and I appreciate that. I I really do. It's I I know what I pay. You know, I'm I'm happy to sell at x price but if someone wants to pay slightly more 
that's okay. And what you're going to find is the more that you kind of build these relationships peer to peer, the more or the less people are inclined to get you for the cheapest price. It's some of these people can be ruthless in, in how they buy stock. There's one gentleman on the group, so I'm not here to name or shame. It's, it's not like that. He will hound and hound and hound and you're like, no, spot, spot, spot. And an inexperienced seller will eventually cave. And that's that's not what you want. You go to peer to peer because you want to make more money than you can from the dealer. Now, that's why, why give it away to an individual when you can make that yourself if you're willing to put the work in. You just need to be firm on that one. So that's that's some experience that I've kind of gathered over the years. You know, there are human behavioral traits that you need to pick up on. If anyone comes across, ah, there is also the pitfall. Of, uh, I didn't write this down. I've been reading off a list what I've been planning, but there's the pitfall of people trying to scam you as well. I don't know anyone who hasn't been scammed. Uh, I was scammed out two sovereigns. It was quite a complex uh, thing that he did. I, I got nothing back from that. I wrote it off as a cost of business. You need to you need to check your sources, you need to ask around, you need to work out who's a good buyer, etc. And yeah, it's it's just one of those things. Some people will say, Oh, I want coins up front. Some people say, I want to meet. I'm very wary of meeting people. I, I don't like doing it. I do meet the occasional person, but the reality is everything goes through the books anyway, so I'm completely honest about that. And the golden rule is if someone makes you feel uneasy don't meet them or don't sell to them because the gut the gut feeling tends to be right it, it genuinely does i knew that before I, I traded a few years if something feels off it genuinely is off if something's too good to be true it genuinely is too good to be true i hope you've enjoyed the video i i've got some more planned i will see you on the next one take care guys bye